welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at pharmaceutical chemistry. Pharmaceutical chemistry is about drugs and medicines. So what is the difference between drugs and medicines? First of all, we're just going to define these two words. So a drug is a chemical that can alter biochemical processes. Now this could be for the better or it could be detrimental. Medicines are drugs which are beneficial. So within the body you have receptors and receptors are usually made of proteins. So they will have nitrogen and hydrogen bonds, carbon to, carbon to oxygen double bonds within them and they bind to substrates. So a lot of drugs work on enzymes within the body and receptors within the body and the receptors have a special shape to them as you can see here. This is just a rough sketch of a receptor and the substrate is the thing that joins onto the receptor to cause some sort of response within the body. The substrate comes along and it fits this, the shape of the, the receptor exactly. As you can see here, it, fit, it mirrors the shape and it just fits in and bonds through intermolecular forces or ionic attractions. We have two classes of drugs that we look at in advanced higher. The first are agonists and these are drugs that mimic the body's own responses. and they can trigger a response within the body. An example would be salbutamol, which is used for asthma, which mimics adrenaline, but binds more strongly. The second classification is antagonists, and they do the opposite. They bind to the receptor, but they block the active site. This means that they inhibit the response and they prevent the binding of the natural molecule. An example would be propanolol, which is used for high blood pressure. So let's have a look at the way agonists and antagonists work. So here is an agonist molecule and you can see that it fits the receptor exactly. So it fits in there and it triggers the response that the receptor would usually produce within the body. An antagonist almost fits the receptor shape, so it fits enough that it can bind there, but it doesn't bind completely, so it doesn't trigger the response, but it blocks the receptor off so that nothing can get in there, so the response can't be uh, triggered within the body. So it inhibits the response from happening. Let's have a look at how drugs can interact with receptors. If receptors have ionic groups within them, such as here we have the NHC+, or the CO2-, your drug can interact ionically with this. If it has the appropriate groups. So here we have the uh, carboxylate group here interacting with this part here and we have the opposite interaction here. Another way that drugs can interact is through hydrogen bonding. Often within receptors you could have NH groups or OH groups and you can get an interaction happening between the different groups. The part of the drug molecule which binds to the receptor and causes the pharmacological response is called the pharmacophore. Here we have three different drugs which all have a similar structure in common. So you can see that all of the drugs have this OH group here. They all have this benzene ring. They all have this cyclohexane ring. They all have this part here which sticks out at the front. They all have this N-methyl group here at the side and that's the part, that is where their similarity stops. They all have this different group attached here which will cause them to have slightly different responses. 
So the bit that is identical for all of them would be the part that we could say is probably the bit that causes the pharmacological action. Here is a past paper question which looks at just that, the structure of a molecule that makes it um, pharmacologically active. So you're to try and work out which of these would be an active antibacterial agent based on the information that you're given here. Pause the video now and try this question. So to work out which of these would be an active antibacterial agent, you need to compare these structures to the active and inactive ones within the table. So the active antibacterial agents have this NH2 group and then a ring, and then they have this S double bond O double bond O part, and then an NH group. The only difference for each of them is that this one has a CH3 and this one has an H. So we can assume that up to this point, these things are important. If we then have a look at the inactive ones and see how they differ, this inactive one still has the NH2, but its difference is it doesn't have the NH bond here. So once we've got this OH bit, then it's no longer active. So we know we must need this NH bond. If we then have a look at this inactive one, it has almost the same structure as this active one here, but it's changed because it's got this part here. So we must need this H as well. So within these ones here, we're going to need to have an NH2, a benzene ring, SO2, NH, and then some sort of group attached afterwards would be fine. So here we have an NH2, benzene ring, SO2, and NH, and then another group. So it would look like this will be our active agent but we'll have a look at this one here. Here we've got this CH3 group, which the in inactive ha one had, so that's not so good. We've got an NH, we've got the benzene ring, we've got an SO2, and then the NH2 group. This one has the NH2, it has a benzene ring, SO2, but it doesn't have the NH here. This one has a CH3, which we know isn't helpful. We have a benzene ring, an SO2, an NH, and then another group. So this is the only one which has all the structural fragments that these two active ones have. So that would be the drug which would be an active antibacterial agent. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye!